hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm your host miss kk and that's eat the wave so this is really just your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal family and business finance and all we are hoping is that by the time you get to the end of the series you are really better equipped to make sound financial decisions all right so if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by we really appreciate having you on board please consider subscribing and if you're already a returning subscriber an awesome appreciation for always stopping by today i'm back with yet another video on bank charges and and this is a follow-up video on the video I did last week. So if you haven't done so, please check the video that we released on bank charges. It has detailed information about different bank charges where I did a comparison of which bank accounts is as cheaper on the major four banks in Namibia when you are looking at a gold account. And someone actually asked I could if I could do a similar analysis on a check account. So I will see if I get time to get to that video. All right, but before I get into that video, I really just want to remind you guys of the importance of reviewing your bank charges. I have done a video on how to effectively review your bank charges, but I want to remind you that if you don't review your bank charges, you're never going to know what transactions are going on your account that are fraudulent. You're never going to know when you have missed payments. You're never going to know when you're actually being charged excessively for bank charges because unless you review and find out what actually, what actually is going on in your account, you will never know. So this month on the 26th 25th of august i woke up to do two two debit orders ordinarily i don't put my debit orders on the 25th because i don't like running the risk of bounce debit orders for example if your employer for some odd reason can't release the payments on time and you are paid late and you have your debit order going off exactly on the 25th you run the risk of actually having bounced debit orders so that day i woke up to two debit orders it was my study policies that were deducting so i was like let me just quickly log in my app to see what exactly transpired what else have gone off that i that i wasn't aware of only for me to find around 200 on my account and it was reference ak brothers i tried to remember where i could have been that week maybe i swiped at ak brothers but i just couldn't and then i looked at my sms notification to see if this 200 has actually given me a notification and surprisingly not so after some times I called the bank and I asked what exactly happened on this 200 the lady first said she, she couldn't tell me if I want to find out I need to fill in a dispute form I need to go physically in the branch to go fill in a dispute form and after thinking about it for, like, for about maybe 30 minutes I called back the bank and I told them I really just want to established whether this was a legit transaction or it was a fraudulent transaction because if it's a fraudulent transaction i might have to act now so please look into this transaction and let me know are you able to see the location of the swiping and she said no it's at ak brothers in otapi and i wasn't even in the north over the last month Per se so i told this lady this is definitely a fraudulent transaction so i'm going to cancel all my cards and make time to come in the bank and at other any other time and um actually submit the form so that you guys can investigate and find out what this was for and then if it's a fraudulent transaction refund me my money so eventually i got to it and i filled in the form and i'm still waiting for them to come back so if really you actually suspect that there's a fraudulent transaction on your account there are a few things that you need to do don't wait around because you don't know what else these people can do call the bank and find out what it was and try and cancel your card try and lower your limit try and you know um change your internet banking pin for example just try and close out the loopholes of where these people could have entered in your account so that's just on a side note let's get back to why that's why we are doing this video so okay so i did quite a lot of bank charges in the previous video but there were a few bank charges that i forgot again i'm gonna do it again on the merger four banks it is fnb net bank standard bank and bank rentuk so i have a summary again on my computer so if you see me looking down again i am looking at the summary that i have made so the things that i wanted to find out to, to speak about here today is instant efts cash at the teal um bounce debit orders withdrawals at other atms and transaction duty or stem duty as we call them credit card renewal and monthly statement so i have quite a few still that i need to discuss but i think they are quite common on all the accounts that's why i feel like it's very important to discuss these things okay all right so also before i actually go on in the video i realized that this month i got an, an email from my bank telling me that they are changing the date that they will come and collect their bank charges so i think they've actually noticed that a lot of people sometimes don't have money and in their accounts on the first or the second so when they come and collect their bank charges they are 
people's bank accounts are empty so they've actually made brought forward that they will come and collect the bank fees on the 27th of each month so i don't know what that means for whether everyone is blanketly being applied the 27th or it's just us that get paid on the 25th because it would it would actually be a little bit unfair for them to come and collect bank fees on the 27th when there are people that actually get paid on the 30th so i don't know how they are applying this so please bear in mind of this change and see if your bank has changed this is particularly at netbank they sent an email so if you are a netbank user and you didn't get this email and you get paid maybe on the 30th you might want to call if that applies to you or this was an email that was specifically paid out uh sent out to people that get paid on the 25th right so let's talk about eft so the way eft works if it's if if it's same bank to same bank it reflects instantly but if it's interbanking it requires a certain number of working hours and the payment needs to be released before a certain hours before that money can reflect on the other end so there was a time lag of at least a day business working hours but earlier this year they introduced something new where they would come and collect payment three times a day so if you release your payment before x amount of time it could still clear within a day even if it's with another bank so um but there's still a bit of a waiting time it, your money doesn't reflect on the other end to that person instantly but what i've noticed there's actually a function for you to make the payment to reflect instantly for example you when you make an eft there will be a button that says immediate payment if you turn that button on that person even if they're not banking with your bank they will get the money instantly but it comes at a charge so on fnb i noticed that they charge 30 dollars for eft instant eft or immediate eft for net bank they charge 20 dollars bank vendor bank is charging you 46 dollars on on top of the normal eft fee so on the, their normal eft is 11 dollars now you must add 46 dollars on top of that and standard bank i couldn't find the information online i tried to call the, their call center and they told me no they don't have that list of transactional bank fees available i must call my branch and ask them how much they will charge me if i want to with do eft this much so i don't have a fee for standard bank okay so that is EFT. So you must now weigh, weigh your options. So personally, I don't do instant EFTs. I only did it this month when I was paying uh, to my friend because I wanted to see how much they would charge me. And I, I, I EFT'd my friend a thousand and actually they charged me $20 for that. And that's the only thing I could find online. Okay. So the second facility I want to talk about is Cash at the Teal. Unfortunately, Cash at the the till is not available for standard bank and it's also not available for bank ventuk but it is available for fnb and net bank and this cash at the till really is just an, a facility that they have put up when you are doing grocery shopping for for example you can with, swipe your grocery shopping and tell them please give me 500 dollar extra and this this withdrawal is actually cheaper because it's five dollar um for net bank and i'm not sure if it's five dollar flat for net bank but it, they did say it's five dollar but for fnb it's five dollar for the first two thousand and it increased with five dollars um for the next two two thousand so it's five dollars when you are getting two thousand when you are getting four thousand instead dollar when you're getting above four thousand then they charge you fifteen dollars so it's quite relatively cheaper compared to your normal cash cash withdrawal that is two dollars sixty for every hundred for example so do take to do take notice that fnb and netbank has this cash of the deal and it's a lot cheaper than the withdrawals that you'd normally get for the uh, normal atm withdrawal or for the normal uh, wallet withdrawals all right then you have bounce debit orders i didn't specifically look at bounce debit orders for the banks because there was a uh, there was a, re a, a release that came out sometimes earlier this year and i earlier last year last year actually not this year when i did a specific video on that where they said that they've changed the rules around debit orders especially when they bounce so if a debit order bounce they will charge you 1.5 percent of the amount that has bounced uh, and there's a threshold but it, that amount can't be lower than 36 and it can't be more than 200 per debit order so if 1.5 times the amount that is bouncing is less than 36 you're going to be charged 36 if it's bit if it's between 36 and 200 they charge you whatever the amount is and if it's above 200 they will cap it at at 200 per debit order so if you take for example someone that has three debit orders one is a thousand one is a thousand five hundred and one is eight hundred and all of those debit orders bounce if i take 1.5 percent of each of those amount they are all less than 32 so the first one 1.5 of a thousand is 15 1.5 percent of 1.5 is actually 22 and 1.5 of 800 is 12 so all those debit orders are less than 36 so that means i'll be charged 36 times 3 which gives me 
um, 108 in bounce debit order so i'm i did a video separately on bounce debit order where i explained the whole situation but please bear in mind not to let your debit orders to bounce because number one they attract bounce debit order fees and number two they actually also influence your credit score okay let's look at the atm withdrawal fees when you are withdrawing at another bank using a different bank atm so when i posted the first video my friend actually asked this this means that if you withdraw with another bank's card at another atm you would actually Actually be charged and I told her it's not a myth because it's clear on their website that if you do withdraw with another bank's ATM we are going to charge you a little bit extra so let's look at how much extra they will charge you so if you withdraw with an at an FNB ATM with a non FNB ATM card they will charge you five dollar sixty plus thirteen dollar seventy for every five hundred and if you want to learn how to calculate five dollar sixty for every five hundred please go check out the first video we really did cover how to calculate that NetBank on the other hand they're saying that they will charge you seventeen dollar plus 1.95 percent of the amount that you are withdrawing but if that 1.95 percent exceeds 65 they will cap it at 65 so it's really not a mess just go check out your website you actually realize that these fees are actually actual fees then we have bank ventook so bank ventook works slightly almost slightly the same as fnb they will say this much per this much plus a fixed amount so bank ventook is 38 plus 12 dollar 19 for every 300 that you withdraw and lastly um standard bank says they will charge you 42 dollar 50 plus their normal bank charges their normal bank charges are 11 dollar per 300 dollar that you withdraw so if anything it's expensive to withdraw at another bank using a different bank's atm card then i wanted to talk about card renewal card renewal is when you want to go to the bank to go replace your card before it expires so when when an, when a card expires they will give you a free card without or they might charge you but most of the time they'll give you a free card because you've used that card until it has reached its useful life so when i went to the bank now to go fill in this dispute form regarding the story i told earlier about the the withdrawal or the swiping that went off my account the lady uh, i told the lady i'm here to um fill in a dispute form and also get a new card and the lady immediately said to me no we'll charge you 175 for that card and i said say what why do i have to get charged for cancelling a card for a security reason and then she just ignores me and then she gives me the uh, you know the claims form i fill in the form and i get the card and then i said just to confirm am i still getting charged for that card card and then she says no ma'am and she doesn't explain to to me why so basically she wanted to charge me because I just because I told her I'm there for a card replacement, but not necessarily. I didn't intentionally cancel the card, so that meant I was eligible for a free card. So when you go to the bank and you are eligible for a card, meaning your card expire or you cancel it for security reasons, you are not going to get charged. But if you cancel it because you lost it or it fell in the ditch or whatever, then you are going to get charged. So. So for H1B, they'll charge you 159.14 for a card renewal at NetBank 175, at Bank Ventic 204, and at Standard Bank, they will charge you 173 for a card replacement. And so that is pretty sort of uh, in line, but again, Bank Ventic is the expensive amongst all the card replacements. The monthly statement they charge you, if you want to go get a monthly statement from the bank, they will charge you $1 per page that they give you. Guys, one dollar per page but nonetheless you don't have to go to the bank because on your app you can pull your own um bank statement unless you really want them to stamp that to stamp it for you then maybe you might have to, to actually go to the bank but luckily this is one of the bank fee that is consistent across all banks for every bank whether you go to fnb net bank standard bank whatever they'll charge you one dollar for per page that you need but you don't need to go there unless you really need a stamp a stamp form for something else otherwise you just pull it on your banking app and lastly, I want to talk about STEM duties. STEM duties are charged every time there's a debit entry on a savings, credit, or a check account. And it's quite small amounts of, some of you guys probably don't even notice, but for a savings and a credit card, they will charge you 20 cents per debit entry. And when it's a savings account, they will charge you 10 cents per debit entry. So if you go swipe at pick and pay when you're doing your grocery, then you maybe go buy meat at the butchery, butchery then you go buy fruit, fruits at fruit and veg. That would have been three swiping. So that means it's 20 cents per entry. So they will charge you 60 cents as a stamp duty. And normally they charge it per day. They would lump all the transaction that has happened per day and they will put in that entry. So there was an instance where FNB sort of forgot to 
to deduct the stamp duty from people's account and people were bulked charged and for people that didn't have money in their account their account actually went in a minus but it's not really material numbers but i suppose if there's really no money and the bank forgets to to charge you for the last three months it could potentially become material so really those are the type of bank charges that i wanted to talk about today these are really things that affect everyone that has a bank account so i think it's worth noting these things so at the end of the day my call to action to you guys to really look at your bank statement and see how much month how much bank charges are you averaging a month so so you need to go look at your bank fees and see what what bank what service offering are you on? Are you on a gold account? Are you on a savings account? Are you on a platinum gold? Whatever the case may, may be. And do you think the bank charges are worth the services that, the, that you are getting? Of course, different product offerings comes with different services. For example, if you have a gold card, you might not automatically qualify for a credit card. But if you have a platinum account, you automatically qualify for a credit account with a certain pre predetermined limit. So yours is up to you whether you actually use that credit limit or you're actually paying for a credit limit you're not even using so really that's all i had from today's discussion thank you so much for actually tuning in thank you so much for interacting like i've mentioned if you really like and enjoy the type of content that we create on this channel please consider subscribing leave us a thumbs up please leave a comment in your in the comment section below and most importantly share the videos with your friends and family especially on whatsapp status it really helps me grow and reach a greater audience until next time it is goodbye